You're listening to a special edition of the Twin Sioux's only local, regional, and national sports show, The Game Sports Show, live from Icebreaker Sports Bar and Grill. Host Dave McKaig coming to you live in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Booyah, and it's time for the Game Sports Show, the Twin Sioux's only local, regional, and national sports show. You're listening to the Game Sports Show on thegamesportshow.com, thegamesportshow.podbean.com, or through the Scott Nason YouTube channel. Either way, we're thankful that you're able to join us here tonight. It's yours truly, David McKegg, here live at Icebreaker Sports Bar and Grill, upstairs at the John Rhodes Community Center, and it's absolutely packed here at the John Rhodes with female hockey tournament going on, other hockey games going on here at Icebreakers. It's absolutely packed. We're here in the VIP room, kind of secluded away, so uh, the noise doesn't bother the podcast. And also outside the VIP room, gymnastics is going on as well. If you're, you have a child in gymnastics, you're here doing that. Definitely action-packed as well because of the Oval. Can't forget that we have the Oval here at the John Rhodes Community Center. Definitely packed and a place to be here tonight through Sault St. Marie. And as I mentioned, we're here live at Icebreaker Sports Bar and Grill. Make sure you come up here when you're at the John Rhodes or just to come by in general. you got a great staff. They have some great food they can cook for you and obviously some nice cold beverages. Even though it's chilly outside, come enjoy a good beverage, especially after a long day. Or like I said, to come chill or to come visit us here on the Game Sports Show. It's January the 15th, 2019, and we're doing a special edition show here as it is on a Tuesday. Myself and Brad Cochmelio did miss this past Sunday due to yours truly having some scheduling conflicts, and we had to reschedule to tonight. And here on the Icebreakers edition of the Game Sports Show, it is powered by Northern Superior Brewing Company. We talk about everything local, and then we do end the show on some bonus topics in terms of the National Hockey League. And boy, do we have a good one to bring up here today! But going to stay to the agenda of the Game Sports Show here from Icebreakers tonight. We're going to be talking about the Sioux College Cougars recap this past weekend. Sioux Eagles, Sioux Thunderbirds, Lake Superior State University, as well as the Sioux St. Marie Greyhounds past weekend and upcoming games, as well as a trade deadline in the OHL. And I'm going to be joined by Brad Cochmelio here in just a few moments. The one and only Brad Cochmelio from Sioux Today and also whom writes for Sportsnet as well. And obviously staff member here on the Game Sports Show. And we're going to be here tonight until about 8.30. So don't hesitate to come on by to talk to us. Or if you're not here, well, that's too bad for you. However... You're here catching the show anyways through the Podbean page website or YouTube channel or through our social media pages at the Game Sports Show on Facebook or at the Game Sports Show SSM on Instagram. And as you may have saw on the Facebook page, there is a like giveaway. By the end of January, we have a prize that we're going to be giving away here on the Game Sports Show. A couple sponsors coming together here, giving us some of the prizes to give out. Very high value is the giveaway, and we're going to be doing a Facebook draw. And that Facebook draw will be live. And you get to see if your name gets announced, you are given the chance to be a lucky winner of our like giveaway. And that will be also through Instagram. We'll be doing one in February for a like giveaway as well. So once you see what the prizes are this month, you know you're going to want to join in in February for sure. Make sure you follow the Game Sports Show on social media or through the Podbean page, the Twin Sioux's only local, regional, and national sports show. As I mentioned tonight here at Icebreakers is where we are, and we're going to be at Sports Center Bar and Grill. That will be tomorrow, Wednesday, January the 16th, 9 p.m. Myself, Jamie Antonello, and Justin Heichel. Hopefully Matt Primo will be there as well to talk about the National Football League, basketball, and other hot topics in sports. In January the 17th, we'll be at Northern Superior Brewing Company. Myself, alongside Dane Hantro and Justin Heichel. We currently don't have any confirmed guests coming on by the show on Thursday, but we're planning to get one or two. So make sure you keep an eye on our ticker or it may be announced at our show tomorrow from Sports Center or day of from Northern Superior. I want to say I apologize to listeners as we did not return to the Wicked Sister this past Monday as uh, we had some basketball being aired on Eagle 95.1. So that obviously had the schedule pushed for us because of the way we're following the sports there over in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan and that side of the border. We will be back at the Wicked Sister, this upcoming Monday, the 21st of January. Myself, Scott Nason, Butch Davis, and E.J. Russell. The first time in one month and two weeks, almost, Brad. That's almost almost a long time to be away from the Wicked Sister. Do the Christmas break, New Year's, and obviously the schedule conflicts going on there for the few Mondays that we need to have aired with other sports over in Sioux, Michigan and through the United States. But I will say after that, 
We may have two weeks off again from the Wicked Sister due to Scott being out of town. Uh, but we're trying to make something up there through the Game Sports Show with an additional show or something for our listeners to make sure that they can follow along and keep up with the four shows a week here that we have on the Game Sports Show. Without further ado, let's bring in the one and only, the beautiful man himself, hat backwards today. I know Heiko's going to be hearing this and chirp me because of the way I always mention someone's attire. But you're dressed nice, Brad. You got a great smile. You're right for Suit Today. You're right for Sportsnet. You talk here on the Game Sports Show. You're one of the busiest men, especially when it comes to sports here in Sault Ste. Marie, that I, or anybody in general. I want to say thank you for taking the time. Come on location. I know this is the last time you'll be on location for a couple weeks because you're going out of town. Um, so definitely want to say thanks for coming on by here tonight. And excited to talk some hockey or what? What am I not excited to talk some hockey? Let's be honest here. And after an intro like that, who wouldn't want to talk hockey after getting built up like that? A little brown on my nose. Yeah, yeah a little, little, bit, little, little bit, bit of brown. A little, little bit of brown on my nose. And people ask, like, through, what are you going to do after hockey season here at Icebreakers? Now, I will answer that question. I did get a text uh, through that, through a fan. And yes, you know, when LSSU hockey's done, Sioux Eagles are done, Sioux Thunderbirds are done, or anything of such is done, they're going to be saying, well, what are you going to do with the Icebreaker show? Well, we're going to be at Icebreakers throughout the year, and we're also going to be balancing Silver Creek Golf Course and Icebreakers throughout the summer, because this upcoming summer we have plans to get really involved with the local baseball scene, and also we're just going to be talking about some local updates and news throughout the off season, and just we're going to have an additional show all in general, and we're going to make it all work, and we're going to continue to tie in our Sunday show with our Thursday show from North Superior Brewing Company. We do plan to be at North Superior Brewing Company all the way up till June every week, and now be at, per week as I mentioned. And going into the summer, we may go down to every two weeks at North Superior Brewing Company in here at Icebreakers. As at Sports Center, we are there typically throughout the entirety of the summer up until June every week, and then July and August is every two weeks due to coverage that we do locally with the Steelers and the Sabercats, and no, not the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Sioux Steelers. But we do talk about that. So we got lots that we can talk about. And we're also going to get some recap with the baseball across the river. And that's what we're going to talk about on our Monday show a lot. But I'll make sure that I do incorporate it with our show here on Sundays. So I want to give everyone kind of recapped about what we do here on Sundays. And also just some great stuff with the Game Sports Show that you can do. Make sure you get involved with that like giveaway. Make sure you get a chance to win a great prize. Brad, before I get you back in here, just going to go through quick little recap of the local hockey scene here in Sault Ste. Marie and just some upcoming games. Then we're going to get our reaction about the Thunderbirds, Eagles, Lake Superior State University, Lakers, and also Sioux College Cougars on the first part of the show. When we come back from break, we're going to invade that criteria with Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds this past weekend, upcoming week, and also, or sorry, this upcoming weekend, I should say, sorry, and also with the trade deadline that just passes some reaction with that in terms of the two grounds and the entirety of the OHL. And we wrap up our show, we'll get into the bonus topic or topics if we have time. So without further ado, jumping right into it right now, going to talk about the Sioux Thunderbirds here off the hot. The Sioux Thunderbirds went 2-1 and one this past weekend on the road trip, losing 4-1 to one to Kirkland on Friday. And that's a long travel to take Friday morning, go down there. I'm not blaming the loss on any term of travel because John obviously did a great job of keeping the guys prepped for the game. And as he talked about last week on a Sports Center show, when we had him on come by to talk about that as he was unable to come by to Northern last week that he talked about that it doesn't matter if you're a good hockey team you do find ways to win essentially and that he's just going to leave Friday and he's going to keep the boys warm and focused and they obviously did lose the game over in Kirkland but they did bounce back on Saturday and Sunday Saturday winning 6 to 4 against Powassan and then 4 to 2 against French River Rapids now Funny story about friend, uh, this this weekend, and you said Brad on Sunday, correct? It happened. Yeah, so it was it was sort of a whole weekend thing. Um, you lo- they lose Friday night in Kirkland Lake to open the weekend, you know. And and Kirkland's a tough team. I mean, Kirkland's one. Kirkland Lake's one of the best teams in the NHL yeah, right now. I mean, yeah. those are those are two teams that are battling for first in the league standings right now. So that's a that's a game that it's no surprise. It was tight. It was close. Um, the Thunderbirds stayed overnight. From my understanding, the Thunderbirds stayed overnight in Kirkland Lake Friday night. They head to Powassan the next day. Powassan being just outside North Bay. Um, they head to Powassan the next day. Minus some pads. And when I say pads, they're, they left minus some goalie pads. Both goaltenders had their 
goaltender pot stolen off the team bus sometime overnight in Kirkland Lake. Um, so they end up, they, you know, long story short, both goaltenders need new pots for the game that night in Boston. They get set up, everything gets taken care of. So the OPP investigates the situation, eventually does get the pads returned to them in time for the game in French River and Knollville against French River on Sunday. Yep. The interesting fact on that wasn't even so much that the, the pads were stolen and found. But one of the investigating officers from the OPP up in that area was a man very familiar to people locally, and especially in hockey circles around here, yeah. was one Brandon Warmington. Uh, his father's, you know, his family still resides here. He's yeah. a former know, Thunderbird. Yeah, he's a former Thunderbird. North you know, Star. F- played for Mike Hall in the North Stars as yeah. well. He's a former, you know, anybody who, you know, basically anybody who was involved in or follows hockey in, the, in this city over the last, you know, ten years knows Brandon Warmington and remembers him. He's a you know very high scoring forward and, and midget and junior in this city. And so it was really interesting to, you know, kind of get that news that, you know, that one of the officers looking into the situation was uh was from a former was from the Sioux and on top of that was a former Thunderbird as well. And yeah, you know, the good news, the good news about that was that they found the uh they found the pads and got them back to the rightful owners in uh Colin Ahern and Will Anderson and uh you know, it was a, it was overall a good finish to the weekend after uh, you know a tough Friday night in uh, in Kirkland Lake. Now it's definitely funny, you yeah. know, and I obviously knowing Brendan Warmington personally, being a, just a year younger than myself, he you know he must he must have got that assignment and just got a little chuckle himself. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd be almost kind of cool to reach out to him next week through our local edition here, as John Parker won't be able to come by here tonight to get some reaction for the weekend. We do plan to have him on. Sometime this week, either on Thursday before his game here at the GFL Memorial Gardens is where they actually play on Thursday, or on Sunday when we have our uh, recap here at Icebreakers. But definitely get interested to get his take and to even reach out to Brandon about this because he must have got that assignment, like I said, and went, you're kidding me. The Sioux, I mean, the Sioux is everywhere. Yeah. The Sioux is everywhere. It follows you everywhere. It doesn't matter where you are. And it's definitely good that the pads are found, though. 100%. Uh, you know, it's the unfortunate case of theft or you know when things get taken but obviously the team would have been very comedy and to assure that goalies get pads yeah. but as a goalie if you don't have pads that are yours yeah. it's different new pads yeah. or used pad whatever maybe your game is completely different yeah because they're and not and it's not even that they're uncomfortable but i mean there's a let's face it i mean it's the same for any player there's a certain comfort level to your own equipment you know yeah. let's face it i mean i i you know i remember when i played it's you know it's the old adage for a skater when you get a brand new pair of skates Yep. You know, you're working them in, and then when you finally get them worked in and kind of molded to you, you're they're used yours. to them. Yeah, they're, they're yours. yours. You're used to them, right? Yeah. And, you know, it's a, it's the same thing with uh, it's the same thing with goalie pads. Is you know, those pads are are built for uh, are built for that kid. So, you know, they're you know, you know, let's face it, both Thunderbird goalies they've worked those uh, they've worked those pads in, and you know, it's it's huge, right? It's you know, it's. It's very different to have to play a game in either pads that A, aren't yours, or B, are brand new. Exactly. And that's where, you, I can attest that with skates, you play and you're on the ice, you're stiff, you're like, oh, it's not the same. You know, or if you're putting on someone else's gear even. Yeah. It isn't, it's that comfort level. And I'm a, I'm kind of a germaphobe when it comes to a little bit of using other people's gear, to be straight out honest with you. But at the end of the day, it's still kind of... Like, oh, this is not mine. And so I'm happy that the OPP and then Brandon Warmage in particular, the investigating officer, was able to apprehend the gear back to uh, the Thunderbirds goaltending and to the staff of these two Thunderbirds. So the Thunderbirds this weekend, go this past weekend, sorry, go 2-1, and one, as I mentioned, and they improved their record to 28-9-0-1, oh, 57 points, still a three-point lead in the total overall league standings. And they are still have a pretty good stranglehold in the Western Division, being up on Rayside Balfour by eight points, still having four games in hand. Crook and Lake, a big win on Friday against the Birds. They still remain in first with three games in hand on Cochrane, but 54 points compared to Cochrane's 51. So Crook and Lake and the Birds can be battling for top spot for the entirety of the season, it seems. And that was definitely a good finals preview as the Thunderbirds visited Crook and Lake. That was for the first and only time this season and definitely going to be a great playoff matchup if that is indeed the finals matchup that we see here in the NOJHL but there's still some other teams in the NOJHL as I mentioned Cochrane 
you know, Timmins, definitely got to watch out for Timmins, Rayside, Blind River, and the other team that you definitely got to watch out for that always sneaks their way through, that loves playing the Thunderbirds, especially the Sioux, Michigan Eagles. And we're going to get to the Eagles in just a few moments. Just going to wrap up here with the Thunderbirds. The Thunderbirds do play this weekend. That is Thursday against Espinola at the GFL Memorial Gardens. And then they play Powassan. A little rematch from last weekend after the Thunderbirds beat Powassan 6-4 to four on Saturday. They play Friday here at 7 o'clock in Sioux, Ontario at the GFL Memorial Gardens. Fans I, and listeners, Sioux St. Marie hockey fans in general, whatever it may be, get your rear ends to those seats at the GFL Memorial Gardens. I love that it's called the Gardens one. I actually played there last weekend at Men's League. Boy, do I love big ice in men's league. That's all I got to say because people don't want to skate as much. But it's a big ice surface out there. It's where the Sioux St. Marie Greyhounds play. It looks much better when you have fans in that seat. In each seat, if you – the Thunderbirds do not get as many fans as some other teams, especially in the NOJHL if you want to compare them to the Eagles. If you want to compare them to uh, Kirk Lake, it's a good number of fans especially as well. Blind River has always had a passionate fan base. But, you know, we can do that here in the Sioux. We're a hockey community. I'm here at the John Rhodes Community Center, and there's a packed house here. I know there's hockey fans that want to get out and watch some hockey. So what's better than going out on Thursday at the GFO Memorial Gardens and on Friday to watch the Sioux Thunderbirds play against Espinola and Poisson, respectively. Now, the Sioux Thunderbirds are the local team that are playing at the Gardens this weekend because the Hounds aren't home this weekend. And we're going to get to the Hounds in the second part of the show. But... As I said, please get out to the gardens to support the Thunderbirds. Brad, you, get, you have to agree that it doesn't look good in the stands for the team. Like, I know it doesn't really do, doesn't show what the Sioux is, okay, at the end of the day. But you want to go and watch hockey. You want something to do. It looks much better if you have fans in that scene. The, fa- the players really thrive on that, okay? If I'm on the road and I go to a rink that doesn't get many fans, it actually gives me a little bit more confidence because you're not in a hostile environment. And there's been circumstances I've been in, other people have been in, where you're in an arena with 6,000, with 10,000, or if it's only 1,000, 500, and whatever it may be, and they get that goal to battle back, you lift with that energy. The fans provide that momentum. Okay, the Thunderbirds are a great team, you know, great coaching staff, great staff all in all in terms of players and management. They're first place right now in the NLJHL in the West Division. Good young talent here, a lot of local players. I believe it's 14 players to be exact around that area to be exact. I know producer Ghost or John Park will be uh, definitely texting me to, uh, to correct me if I'm incorrect, but or even Trevor Zachary. But at the end of the day, a lot of local players here, a lot of good young talent, especially uh, with McDonald and also with Lucas Terrio being there. Get out to the GFL Memorial Gardens, pay the admission, support the birds, and watch some exciting hockey Thursday and Friday at the Gardens. They do wrap up this weekend, Sunday, against Espinola uh, at 2 o'clock, and that is in Espinola. So it's Espinola Thursday at 7, Boston at 7 on Friday, both of the Gardens, and they wrap up the weekend Sunday in Espinola. Any final thoughts for the Thunderbirds, Brad, before I move on to the Eagles quick? Yeah, you know what I mean. It's not going to be an easy weekend this weekend. Let's face facts. I mean, you got a good Powassan team coming in. Um, you know, that's a team that's, you know, that's given everybody in the league fits, and they're, you know, they're extremely tough to play against. And um, yeah, I mean, it's you know, it'll be it'll be fun for them to, you know, to play at the at the big rink. And you know, like I said, I mean, it's it, it is tough. I mean, you know, it's part of the reason they came back to the roads was the fact that. I mean, let's face it, it's a lot more fun to play in a building where you're not looking at a lot of empty seats. You know, it's pretty it's pretty simple when you think about it. I mean, let's you know, let's face it, as a player, it's a lot more fun to play in a building when you're not looking at, you know, four thousand plus red seats as opposed to, you know, playing in a rink where you could play in front of a ton of fans. So, you know, it's a, it's gonna be a fun weekend, it's gonna be a busy one for the Thunderbirds and you know, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure John Park is going to have that team ready to go. Oh, he always does. I know Joey Miller might have something to do with that, st- as keeping the boys excited. Just kidding. It's a little jab at Joey Miller. Tell him I give him a shout out. There you go, Joey. Good work, and just throw the bird staff all around. Keep up the good work for sure. Another team, though, that's considered a local team still in my eyes after first off playing with them before. Also, Along with 18 other teams <laughs> in the NOGH. <laughs> Also, proud sponsor of the show as well through uh, through Eagle ninety five point one, who is a who is the actually where the show originally had started from four years ago from McDonald's in the yeah. cafe across the river. So through the Sioux Eagles, the Sioux Eagles 
got some changes this year with the staff with Don LaProte, who I have great respect for. You know, obviously with covering the Suai Blue Devils previously, uh, with having Doug LaProte, a well-knowledge hockey guy. And this is an Eagle team that's extremely dangerous in my eyes. I, I, tough to play against. Very right? tough to play against, and they always are tough to play against, is this team. And this past weekend, they had a pretty good weekend. Friday, the, the, the 11th of January, went at the Polar Stadium in convincing fashion, 7-2 to two over Blind River. Everyone knows that I am kind of soft when I hear the Blind River name. I have a soft spot for the Blind River Beavers after playing so there three times. They, so what happens when they keep bringing you back? <laughs> Sioux Eagles, three-point night from Nathan Solis. Uh, you know, that's uh, definitely big. We've got, got a lot of assists. But there's balanced goal scoring here. Players with one goal. Mikey Butcher, Hayden Clark, Charlie Hanowell. You have George Arfanos, trying to hopefully I don't butcher any names. Kyle Quinn and Dominic Scrigella. I That one I definitely butchered. So Dominic, I apologize. But balance scoring, lastly, came from Jake Lombardi getting an assist. So you have no one got more than two goals. You have seven different goal scorers, but obviously with Nathan Solis and also with Brandon Blair, Nathan getting three assists and two assists going to uh, Brandon. Uh, Mikey, Hayden, Charlie as well had two points on the night along with Dominic. So a lot of good balanced scoring when I see that. And what I see is a good outshot total here. They outshot the Blind River Beavers 49-35. to 35. Joseph Bendetto up 33 out of 35 shots. Definitely a great performance by him. And Garrett over on the Blind River side, 42 saves and 49 shots. That's a lot of shots to take, especially in junior, especially with the kind of offense that the Eagles and players have all in all. The Sioux Eagles walking away with a 7-2 win against Blind River. And then they wrap up the weekend, winning 3-2 in a shootout to Espinola. That Espinola team. Little dark horse. Like they always, they could be a spoiler when it comes in later on in the season. But definitely, Sumishkin uh, getting away with a 2-0 weekend is definitely great, and I'm sure Doug LaProde was extremely happy to have that result, especially that game on Friday. I know the Polar Stadium was probably a rocket. If I'm, if I remember correctly, if they won games big against Blind River, they used to throw a, a beaver tail on the ice. I'm not sure if that occurred at Polar Stadium. I'm going to have to reach out to my connections over there in Sioux, Michigan to find out. Or if you were there at the game, comment below. I want to know if they still throw the beaver tail on the ice. I know one time the Blind River, Blind River Beavers at the, in the community center in Blind River, we did throw a stuffed eagle one time. Okay, so I know that's a little bit of a thing. And it wasn't a real, it wasn't an actual stuffed eagle. It was a stuffed animal, I should tell my listeners. It wasn't like somebody went out and killed an eagle and Diced, got rid of all the guts and put a stuff in there. Sorry to be descriptive, listeners, but it was actually a stuffed animal. So it was always a thing back in the day in the NOJHL. Now, I know there's rules when it comes to throwing stuff on the ice and the netting, but the Polar Stadium, they got ways where you can throw stuff on the ice there. So I don't know. I'd like to know if they threw the beaver tail on the ice. Did one of the fans it was definitely a good tradition. It's funny with these two eagles. But congratulations to the two eagles going 2 0 this weekend. This up or this past weekend, sorry. This upcoming weekend, they do play Friday in Elliott Lake at 7 30. Saturday, they are back home against Powassan. And then they are off until next Thursday, January the 24th, where they travel to Sudbury. So two games for the Eagles this upcoming weekend, Friday and Saturday. What do you think of that beaver tail story? Uh, you know what? That was something I didn't know that I didn't know that was a thing. But I mean, let's face it: when you got uh, when, when you, you play got a rivalry, teams, right? Yeah, when yeah. you've got a rivalry between two clubs, it's you know it's fun that they that the fans have that rivalry and kind of keep things going. Oh, and it's definitely awesome, and it pays off when you've played for both teams. You get to know a little bit of the circumstance for it. But I want to know if someone actually did throw a beaver tail, or if someone will next time after hearing this. Not condoning it, league. I hope the NOJHL knows that I'm not condoning that. But Rob was, he's going to come, him, after he's gonna come up here and throw an icebreaker or one of our locations and be like, "What the heck are you doing?" But definitely was definitely a good part at the end of the game. You just always get laughs at that when I was on either side of the ice for that. So more local news. I'm going to recap here quick, Brad. I know I want to get your take before I jump into uh, go to our break here. I got Lake Superior State University Lakers. Okay, and then to conclude All before we go to break, I will talk about the Cougars recap this past weekend and their upcoming games. But Alabama Huntsville, they went 7 2. They then tie 1 1 on Saturday, but Alabama Huntsville gets that extra point it's because extra point of, because they won in a shootout. And okay. It's a weird NCAA thing. and It's kind of a. Yeah, like college hockey just wants to make life difficult. <laughs> 
and I'm I'm saying that as a joke. I truly don't mean it. No, but I mean it. It it, it is a little. You know, I, I always laugh and, you know, it's a little off topic, but I always laugh because it's, you know, we're so used to, you know, we're so used to the way we see things over here in terms of, you know, the point set up and, you know, the way team, the way leagues handle shootouts and stuff. It's, you know, the Ontario Hockey League, the NOJHL, we're used to it, right? So when you go over and cover college hockey, it's very different because, you know, like you said, you know, technically that game goes down in the standings as a tie. Yeah, but Alabama Huntsville actually gets two points out of it because they want a shootout, and then it ruins kind of the streak for the Lake State because yeah. the Counselor streak is a tied one. Really, they've been unde- they've been yeah, unbeaten so like, in their past home. Yeah, many games? so Lake State I believe is unbeaten in like eight games right now. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight um, games with that tie. So they're yeah, eight zero the and one. So, yeah. Eight zero and one in their past nine. Yeah, so it's you know it's it's a weird setup, but. I mean that's a Laker team that's playing really well right now. Like it's yeah, they are. You know they. I can't remember. Like I honestly can't remember the last time that that school won eight or, or had an unbeaten streak of eight games. Yep. Um. You know it's a team that's playing really well and they beat some good teams too. That's the scary thing is the fact that you know they're beating good teams. Michigan along the way. back at the Invitational. You know, they, they, yeah. They like you go back to the Great Lakes Invitational. They beat Michigan State in overtime to get to the final. And then beat Michigan Tech in the final. Yeah, six you three. Know? So they so they beat two good teams. Yeah, you know, two quote high high end teams to win that tournament. That's the first time Lake State has ever won that tournament. Which it's is history. Which, it's which, history. Which, which is a surprising thing in and of itself because you know this is a school that's won five national titles, but they've never won the Great Lakes Invitation. It's crazy. Fact. You know, um, hey, Suited Day is on and Sportsnet's on and the Game Sports Show's on. Hey, you know what? I always say it. I'm not just a pretty face around here. No. Sometimes I, I'm going to throw something And you look even you smarter right now because you're clean off your glasses. See? You know, you're, you're sitting there, the you're cleaning out your smart. You, if, the lift, if the listeners could see this, you'd yeah. be like, hey, you know what? That guy knows what he's talking about. I will promise one day by the end of this year that we will have not only a podcast recording and a live recording at once. We are going to have a media live recording, which means Facebook or Instagram live. We're going to have something going on there for sure, I promise. So you can see Brad clean his glasses. I'm not going to be wearing my glasses, though. I'm going to wear contacts and try to keep the hairstyle and look spiffy. i got to try to look good to gotta, compensate gotta, for keep, my you gotta, you butchering of last up. names. you got to keep up with me. That's yeah, I got it. And butchering of last names yeah. is where I start from. That's my known point, as Jamie Antonello would say. The Wednesday, one of the Wednesday hosts, Jamie Antonello. But... Alabama Huntsville weekend. Still, I think, a good weekend for the Lake yep. Superior University Lakers. They they travel this upcoming weekend to Minnesota State as that's they play. Gonna be, that's going to be the big test for them. Yes. I mean, Minnesota State Minnesota State come in here and wax them. What was the score? Uh, that, a few weeks. Uh, this was a few weeks back. Uh, Minnesota State. 4-2 and 3 nothing. Yeah. And, and and I was at one of the games that weekend. And, like, and no disrespect to Lake State, but the game I was at, it wasn't close. Minnesota State was good, and they were, I believe at that time, they were ranked in the top 10 in the country, um, but this is a Lake State team that's very good, and you know what, I, I confidence I, right now, too, yeah, and you know what, this is a team that's extremely confident, they're winning hockey games, and you know, they've beaten some good schools along the way here in this last little stretch, so this is a team that's going in with a ton of confidence right now, lots, you know, when you, when you have a team, it doesn't matter what a team's record is, if a team's going in with confidence, confidence can be a very scary thing, yep. you can have the worst record in a league, but if you've got a confident club, it makes a difference, um, you know, so that's going to be, it's going to be a tough weekend, it's going to be a tough stretch going forward, uh, you know, they've got a weekend against Bemidji State coming up, uh, you know, down 25th, the road. 26th, yep. Um, you know, and, and the Minnesota State weekend this weekend. So this is going to be a it's gonna be a tough little stretch here, but uh, you know, it's going to be a huge test for this Lakers team. And, you know, we'll, we'll see we'll see kind of where they're at and, you know, how much this confidence can carry them this weekend uh, on the road. And that's, a, and that's a tough trip. That's a long trip going to Minnesota State to play, too. Ten hours? Ten? Eight? Yeah, somewhere around that area? At least, I, I believe it's at least ten. Yeah, that's a long trip. And they don't fly. No. They bus. No. They bus. So safe travels to Lake State, obviously. Yeah, this isn't going to Anchorage or uh, Fairbanks. So no. You're, you're busing. Exactly. And the thing is, they do return home the 25th, 26th at 7 o'clock. This weekend is 8.07 starts at Minnesota State as Lake State hopes to continue to roll 
As don't let that tide streak of one fool you. They are 8 0 1 in their past nine. I still count them. They're unbeaten in their past nine games, which is very impressive. 14 6 and 2 overall, and they are looking good. Sue Michigan must love hearing this right now. They've been craving for this team to change around, and they are doing so. So let's enjoy this ride. And when we come back home, or when we come back home, I mean, when Lake Superior State University Lakers come back home, the 25th, 26th, Get your butts to those seats and enjoy this great hockey team that's been doing so well this year. So, Brad, last thing I'm going to get to before we go to our break is talk about the Sioux College Cougars. Kind of sticking to the school route here, jumping over the Sioux Ontario side. Wrapping up what Sioux College did this past weekend. Three games, January 11th, 12th, and 13th. They played at the University of Miami, Ohio. Friday, they played University of Miami, Ohio, winning 3-0. Saturday, they played Liberty University. They won 14-2. And on Sunday, they played against Liberty, winning the game 9 to nothing. So two shutouts on the weekend. And also, if you want to do that math, 12 plus 14, 26 goals for two against this weekend for Sioux College with a very impressive weekend. Sioux College Cougars do not have a game on the schedule posted. They do not play until Friday, February the 8th in Central Michigan, and they are on the road for the remainder of the season. Any potential schedule changes, keep an eye on the Sioux College schedule website or reach out to Mike Hall. Sioux College is 18-2-1 this uh, this season so far, and they've won nine in a row. They're 4-0 at home when they played here, and they're 9-2-1 on the road. So Sioux College, congrats on a previous weekend. And a little bit of a rest of sorts in terms of games. They get to practice, have some team time before they travel to Central Michigan in February. Like I said, any changes, keep an eye on the website with SiouxCollegeCougars.ca slash sports slash ACHA. And there's more slashes after that. But as I said, you can access that right away and I'll bring it to the Google site where you can click and get onto Sioux College Cougars website. Brad, that wraps up the Thunderbirds, the Eagles, Lake Superior State University Lakers, and the Sioux College Cougars all in one. And then me talking for six minutes at the beginning about the light giveaway, about where we're at, and just some random discussion like we like you to open up the show. That was 31 minutes, as I like to say. We're right on time for our show right now. And producer Ghost telling me that we got to go to commercial break. So Brian and I are going to do that. We're going to sip on some waters and beverages here at Icebreaker Sports Bar, socialize a little bit. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the Sault Ste. Marie Grounds this past weekend and upcoming games, also some news, the, the trade deadline for the Hounds, what they did, or should I say didn't do, and also with the OHL trade deadline as a whole. And we're going to wrap up with two bonus topics that has had one come in right now that I definitely want to talk about. So we got another about 20 to a half left on the show tops. Brad and I will be right back here at Icebreaker Sports Bar and Grill. Listen to this twin, twin Sues only. Easy for me to say. Twin Sues only local, regional, and national sports show. Listen to the Game Sports Show on thegamesportshow.com or through the Podbean site or YouTube channel of Scott Nason. Don't go anywhere. The Game Sports Show is pleased to shout out a partner, additional home, and sponsor to Northern Superior Brewing Company, located on 50 Pym Street in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Northern Superior Brewing Company having a strong presence locally with many beers to offer. With much involvement in the community of Sault Ste. Marie, Northern has a sport and friendly-like atmosphere within its tap room, and during the summer months, it is a must to visit Pier 55 to enjoy some delicious food, amazing view of the water, and view of the Bush Pulley Museum right on the cusp of the Hub Trail, and of course, all of that down with a delicious brew from Northern Superior. Northern Superior Brewing company it's a northern thing the game sports show would like to thank an additional sponsor and special edition home to the game silver creek golf course located on 104 bellow lake road garden river ontario and also shout out thank you to silver creek gm jamie henderson silver creek golf course has many specials to offer for 18 holes nine holes and even twilight deal specials it does not matter what your level of golf game is it is a must to enjoy the scenic course memorable experiences that silver golf course offers silver creek also also offers a Thursday wing night for you to enjoy food after a stellar time on the course. You can book your tea time by phone or online at GolfSilverCreek.com. Silver Creek Golf Course, where all are welcome to play. The Game Sports Show would like to thank an additional sponsor and additional home to the Game Sports Show. Sports Center Bar and Grill. Sports Center Bar and Grill, located on 624 Wellington Street West, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Sports Center rated top sports bar for the second year in a row. At Sports Center, enjoy their famous 75 cent wing night along with delicious Molson products on tap, along with a great atmosphere and other great food options available as well. Sports Center Bar and Grill, the Sioux's best sports bar. 
Get Wicked Catering from the crew at The Wicked Sister. We like to think of ourselves as foodies. While our favorite foods are paired with a beer tasting at The Wicked Sister, you can now have the same creative menu for your next catered business luncheon, family get-together, wedding, or holiday party. Our white truffle risotto appeals to your gluten-free and vegetarian guests. Add sautéed shrimp or freshly grilled chicken for a pop of protein. Or let us build you a custom menu to suit your needs. From plated events of 15 to buffets for two. The Wicked Sister will cater your event with tapas, snacks, craveables, or a full sit-down dinner. The Wicked Sister, where you'll be treated like family, whether you like it or not. The Game Sports Show would like to thank a list of additional sponsors. North Shore Sports and Auto, new location located on 647 McDonald Avenue, Sault Ste. Marie. A family-owned and operated business with doing business in Sault Ste. Marie for over 10 years. Loads of products available for your enjoyment for all seasons. North Shore Sports and Auto, we understand the importance of quality service and products, and we work hard to ensure that all customers have a positive experience before and after each and every sale. North Shore Sports and Auto, meeting all of your new and pre-owned equipment needs. Special thanks to the Salon. The Salon, located on 589 Second Line East, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, owned and operated by Mike Cuglietta. Book your appointment today at 705-941-9191 or via online at https colon dash dash the Salon Sioux dot as dot me dash the salon making the suit beautiful one haircut at a time as well as a shout out to the superior pro shop the superior pro shop located inside the community first credit union superior arena on 285 northern avenue east to st marie ontario owned and operated by jeremy paquin and ran by larry monroe superior pro shop for over 40 years meet all of your skate sharpening skate repair and hockey needs also to discover the canvas discover the canvas Located on 317 Wellington Street West, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. A beautiful new renovated building owned and operated by expert artist and Sioux native Katrina Tipito. Katrina taking her talents of the ink in Sault Ste. Marie and truly creating the best and most realistic art locally. Call Katrina today at 705-450-8099 or email her at discoverthecanvas at gmail.com to book your tattoo or consultation today welcome back to the game sports show the twins who's only local regional and national sports show you're listening to the game sports show on the game sports show.com the game sports show.podby.com or the scott neeson youtube channel it's myself and brad kutchmilio here live at icebreaker sports bar and grill upstairs at the john Rhodes community center packed house here at the john Rhodes due to the tournament we got female tournament we got male tournament uh, the steel plant tournament is actually what i am being told it is as an exact and i should have known that because I was already communicated that. But, hey, I guess that's my you blew it moment here. John Rose is absolutely packed. It's definitely a place to be. And gymnastics actually just concluded as the lights went off over there. So the John Rhodes Community Center parking lot might be getting a bit more parking spaces. As Brad and I had quite the fucking hard time getting a parking spot. I think I wasted half a tank. I was <laughs> trying to find a parking spot. So I'm I drove dizzy circle in the place. I drove, lot. I drove past you. I don't know if you saw me. I, saw, I, I didn't see you at I, first, but I did see where your truck was parked. So I parked beside another Dodge Ram that made a parking spot on the sidewalk. Yeah. Now, is that legal? Probably not. Um, this you, could, you could potentially, and I'm not condoning this, but you could potentially make the argument that you didn't know the sidewalk was there. Exactly, I can say that. Because the way the snow was pushed over. You could and that I didn't want to park on the road if the plow comes by. Yeah. Not that I don't think anyone's going to be plowing tonight because it's not really snowing. Yeah. But point of my story is... I have a truck and I wanted to use it, and I did. And I know some people are going to be looking out there going, hmm, yeah, I don't like this guy, but I promise you I'm a good guy. So if you see a Dodge Ram out there that you know is my truck, don't worry. I parked in a place that's safe. I didn't take up two spots. I took up one, and I just did it because somebody else did. Not because I'm a follower by any means, but... And let's face it, some other people out there did take up more than oh one Oh, my spot. God. Some people were blocking off other people there in were, terms there of cutting some, off. There were, some bad, there were some bad parking jobs out there, and I'll throw that you out there. see the very the back? They parked diagonally yeah. instead of and vertically. Then, and, then, and then there's the one guy, because there's one spot, and I don't know, and I shouldn't say guy, one person. One person, yeah. Who managed to find the one spot in the snowbank along the road that was cut in and backed in? Like, like I, whoever this was, good job on getting probably the best parking spot in the entire place. Yeah, backed right in, tucked out of the way, doesn't have to worry about anything. No, nope. perfect. Nope, you can leave that there for a couple of days. Yep, you won't get a and scratch. People, people wouldn't even notice it. No. People wouldn't even notice it. And why are we talking about parking? Because we like to open up the beginning after break a little bit of fun conversation. It is. And we're in the VIP area. We like to sit here. We call this the VIP area because it is. 
Yeah. It is We're a very VIP important area. people. Very important people. At least We're we keep telling important. ourselves that. We do. We have to keep confident. Yeah. Do you think Brad and I are very important? You can just comment below to let us know if you think we are, but I don't think we're getting a lot of feedback yeah, with that. So. No, I don't think so either. Follow the so Gamesboard Show. People will say we're very something. They were very, uh, you're very good very looking. Important. I'm pretty yeah. mediocre. Well, you you know what? You're a pretty good guy. You're a pretty I'm good, a good guy. guy but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've got a ways to go to compete with me. But yes, I do. That's just do. me showing my inner confidence. Yes, that is. You actually give me a piece of, uh, giving me confidence. Like, you have a little right. bit of ways to go. It's not like you said you have a holy shit way to go. No. You got a little bit of ways to go. You're getting there. You're I like that. There. See? I like that. I like that. I realize my improvements when I first started till now. Holy Christ. But anyways, we're going to get back on topic here on the Game Sports Show. You can follow the Game Sports Show on Facebook. Don't forget our like giveaway. Brad, you know the prize. It's big. Big it's prize. Big. It's big. It's a nice prize. Uh, it's big. Like, I can't even pump it up more. It, it, it's big. For simply just liking a page yeah. and getting put into a draw, hey. this is a pretty big prize. Yeah. Now, is it a million dollars? No. I don't have catch the ace kind of money over yeah, here. I'm kidding. But you're going to like the prizes that we have. I kind of gave it away what it is. But it's of high value, and it will be of high interest of others to want. Yeah, I agree. Just to let everybody know. But let's get to the sports here with the Sioux St. McGrounds, Brad. And let's uh, – we have so we have time to talk about our bonus topic. We've got about 25, 26 minutes left here on the show to be exact because, you know, I like to follow exact math here on the Game Sports Show. So – Two grounds this past weekend, Brad. They played against Windsor yeah. and against Mississauga. Friday, Windsor. Saturday, Mississauga. 4-3 win over Windsor. 6-4 win over Mississauga. Earlier in the week, they beat Sarnia 4-2. We talked about that on our Thursday show with myself, Dane, and Justin from Northern Superior Brewing Company. And I should mention, here at Icebreaker Sports Bar and Grill, it's also powered by Northern Superior Brewing Company. So... Talk about the Hounds, Brad. Last yeah. week, their overall last week, how they did. Talk about the game that really that you might want to talk about. And then Mississauga, the big 6-4 win. The fans should be pleased winning both games at home. And then after we talk about the games this past weekend and this upcoming week on the road, we got some, some trade deadline to talk about. So give me your reaction this past weekend. Give us your insight, the one and only Brad. Yeah, well, you know what? I mean, I, I look at the Mississauga game. It, it wasn't pretty. They had a stretch at the end of the second period that essentially won them that hockey game. They they scored three times in the last like three or four minutes of the uh, the second period, and you know that essentially won them that game. And uh, you know, good uh, good little performance by Jake Ingham. Uh, give Jake a shout out on the show. He's uh, he's got some local ties as well. Uh, his mom is his mom is originally from here. She still has uh, a lot of her family in town. Uh, uh, Santana's. Um, so give him, uh, give Jake a shout out. He's having a, you know, it's it's been an interesting year in Mississauga. The unloaded at the deadline. That's a, you know, team looking to rebuild. He's an LA pick. Uh, him and Matthew Valalta could potentially be future teammates somewhere in pro. Oh, uh, both LA picks. Um, you know, so he's, uh, you know, it's it's a tough year there in in that sense. But you know, it's a young team that's going to be good down the road. But you know, for the grounds, it, you know what, it wasn't pretty. John Dean admitted as much that it wasn't, you know, uh, wasn't a perfect weekend by any means. But uh, you know what, at the end of the day, they went out and got the job done. And you know, for me, I always look at it and I'm like, you know, they're they're learning. You know, like it was a learning experience, especially that game against Mississauga that. Hey, you know what? Yeah, they're good enough that they can win some games by just playing a handful of minutes, but it's not going to happen very often. Nope. Um, you know, so that's a that's a team that's you know it's going to learn a lot from uh, from the past week, and you know they're going on a they're going on a road trip that's you know really one of their shorter road trips of the year this week. Uh, going into going into North Bay on uh, on Thursday night, day off Friday, a travel day down to down to Barry, playing Barry at the Molson Center on Saturday night and Sunday afternoon at Sudbury Arena against the Wolves and you know those are Pilon uh, twins. Yeah, the Pilon twins. And that's a that's a Sudbury team that's you know, they brought in uh, Adam Rzichka from Sarnia. That's a Sudbury team that's you know, it's looking to make a little move. They're getting goaltending out of Uko Pekka Lukanen. I love, I to love that. that. I lo- you Uko know, Pekka Lukanen. The man who's got six K's and a handful of U's and And he's know. just a class act too. Yeah. Tapping you know, DiPietro in the World Juniors, yeah, that's a, class. That's and he had class. A gr- and he had a great World Junior tournament too. So that's yep. uh, you know that's a you know that's a Sudbury team that's playing some really good hockey this year, and you know it's going to be tough to beat in the Eastern Conference, and they're you know they're going to be in for a battle in the playoffs. And 
Um, you know, that Barry team, they unloaded a bit at the deadline, traded Lucas Chiodo. You know, they, yep. they moved a couple of veteran guys, so they're getting, uh, you know, getting a little younger. And, you know, that's you know still not a, not going to be Dale Howarchuk, former NHL or Dale, Dale Howarchuk, you know, is going to have that team ready to go. And yep. no, Stan it's... Butler in North Bay, I mean, that's, you know, probably one of the better defensive teams in the league in the sense that that's Stan's style. So, yeah. you know, it's not going to be an easy weekend by any means. It, you know, there are no even when you're playing the Flint Firebirds, there are beat no them easy, twice. Yeah, there are no easy games in this league, and yep. you know that's a that's a team that's going to have a tough weekend. Uh, you know, tough weekend away, and you know, the last week again, it wasn't you know it wasn't perfect by any means, but uh, you know there there was a lot good to take away from it as well. That you had spurts, and you know Jaden Pekka after getting brought over in a trade, he's, he's doing got well. A, he's got a lot of energy. He's got points in three games. Uh, you know the kids played well. He's got a lot of energy. Uh, Yermer Pitlick, you know, great signed, that kid signed, yes. signed as an import kid, and you know, this is a kid who, you know, he didn't play Friday night. He basically signed with the team, got in Thursday, like late Thursday night, you know, signed with the team, and you know, everyone's saying it was the worst kept secret. While well, the, the Greyhounds weren't, and I will say this, the Greyhounds weren't keeping that a secret. No, the only reason it wasn't announced until when it was was just based on the fact that. They had to wait for the paperwork to be official because that's, you know, that is a very touchy thing, especially with import players that, you know, you have to get the paperwork just perfect because it could fall through in an instant. Yeah. That's the only reason that didn't get announced sooner than it did was there. You know, that team's basically waiting for the paperwork to go through. And, you know, this is a kid that I talked to Kyle Roftus about it. You know, that's a kid that they're looking at. You know, they were looking at more so when they drafted him. They were looking at him as a 50-50 shot to play this year, but wanting to come over next year when he was in his dra- NHL draft year to come over and play. Perfect situation. The kid's coming over. He's going to play the second half of the year here. Playoff they start, team. They, start, they started him out on, on the top line with Morgan Frost, and he looked good. Yeah. Like, that that top line looked really good. The Aramir Pitlick, once he really gets settled in, is going to be a real solid player in the OHL. He's you know, there's already talk that this kid's potentially a first-round pick in the 2020 NHL draft. Yarmir Yager? Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> apparently. Uh, you know, the kids, kids getting built up. He's gonna be, uh, he's gonna be a real good fit. Yep. You know, this is a team that, you know, they added without adding. Um, yep. You know, they added without really having to make a trade. We talked uh, about the the last trade they did before down the line was Anthony Demelo uh, yeah. got traded. For Drew, uh, Drew Rauro. Rauro. Yeah. And a it's couple a picks. Name. That's a fun name to say. And a couple picks, too. Yeah. So they got value for someone who wasn't in the lineup yeah. every night for them and didn't and have any goals this year, but he's getting a chance to play. He's, in he, yeah, yeah, he's going to get a chance to play, and they got value for that, and then they didn't yeah. make any moves. When we were here last time at Icebreakers, which was a couple Sundays ago now, technically, uh, they had. We were sitting here talking about, okay, do you trade Frost? We had we had fans up here that were saying they should trade Frost. We had people come up to us and tell us, and we also mentioned that they might not I've make had, a move. You did say that they might not make a move. Yeah. I've had people since the deadline say that they were disappointed that the Grounds didn't do anything at all. Well, you can't you know be either that, because it, yeah, it's not that it's not that easy to either. No, right? it's, it's not. It's not. You know, trading Morgan Frost. I mean, when the team's playing this well, it's not an easy decision to make. So. You know, I, I, for me, if I'm a fan, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, hey, you know what? Yeah, they're missing some picks, but you know what? This is a team that's going to be going to be good going into the playoffs, and you know, maybe you know, maybe people have this unrealistic expectation of what they should do, but you know what? I mean, this Greyhound team, a lot of their young players got a lot of good experience when Barrett Hayton was out for 12 games, and yep. when Morgan Frost was gone for seven, and, you know, Ethan Taylor got a good stretching goal when Matthew Villalta was out being, you know, being both injured and with the World Junior Camp. So, you know, their young players have developed this year. They um, have, and they're still pretty young, this team. Yeah. Cole McKay, who's NHL projected top three rounds, I yeah. believe, is what he's at. You have Ryan O'Work, who's not going to get, I think, a he bit more. Is he's an a stud. stud. Yeah, he's he is be a an stud. absolute stud. They, yeah. you know, I still, and I said this to one of the Greyhound scouts, how that kid fell to the Greyhounds at the end of the first round last year, I boggles my mind because that kid. They're licking their chops. That kid is going to be an absolute outstanding player here in the next couple of years. When that kid's 18, that kid is a physical presence at 16. When he's 18 and fills out, that kid's going to be an absolute beast to play against. Yeah, he is. And he's six, 16 this Ooh, year. Yeah. So he has next year, yeah. the following year, the following year, and potentially 
the following year. So you get four more full seasons potentially out of him. And he's going to go to the NHL from what we, we got to say early predictions here from this end that he, I'm sure drafts in the NHL will be occurring for him, especially the way we see his development. But, you know, you have a good young team along with these older guys. This the way that Dubas all started this, what, 10 years ago, I think it was, this whole situation and having the young guys come up and now with this presence there with Cole being a, a local guy, being there. I like what the Hounds have yeah. and what they've done. And them not adding at the deadline makes sense. People say, well, why wouldn't you want to get something for Frost? We got we gave up a lot for Radish last year. You know what? Sure, we did. You're damn right we did. And at the end of the day, despite that we did, it doesn't matter. We are in a playoff spot. We are in the top three in the conference right now, and we're still in second place right now. Okay, we are behind London, and the, you, you still want to be competitive. If you have a team that can beat Saginaw in the playoffs, they can beat these guys still. Okay, this is not a team that's given up because we didn't get Owen Tippett, McLeod, or Suzuki. Okay, it, it, we, we made moves – that were right for the organization, bringing in Pekka, a little depth dad who's been playing extremely well. And we, we moved uh, DeMello and got picks for him for a guy that wasn't playing. And that third-round pick, who knows who that could turn out to be. That could be a guy who might be the next Morgan Frost or the next Jeff Carter on this team. You never that, know. And that's the big thing is this Crayon team has done a good enough job drafting over the last six years that, you know, yes, it's nice to have the extra picks, but, you know, this is a team that drafts well enough that, not having a second round pick for the next couple of years might not be as big of an issue as some people think it is. Yep. Especially with I mean, drafting it's, right it's away. It's yeah, it's tough. Don't get me wrong, but you know they're not they're not in an absolute awful position. No. Um, I mean, I mean Nick Suzuki. I know there was a lot of talk that Nick Suzuki was coming here, and you know that there was a deal on the table, there was a deal agreed to, and and all this stuff. You know what? I mean, Kyle Raftis has said that there wasn't anything close. He admitted that they had had discussions with Owen Sound about Nick Suzuki. But you know what? Let's face facts. So did probably about 14 other teams. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I don't want Ryan O'Work or Cole McKay or and that, and that's those guys. Too, or Yarmir right? Yager, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, <laughs> and that's the other issue, right, is, you know, people are forgetting that if they make that deal – you know, the Guelph Storm give up three players and three picks in that deal for Sean Dersey, Nick Suzuki, and I believe it was Zach Roberts was the other guy. That's the other guy. Yep. Um, yep. 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 You got to remember, if the Super Greyhounds make that deal, they can't deal second round picks because they don't have second round picks for the next handful of years. No. So all of a sudden, you might have to add an extra player. So all of a sudden, it goes from, you know, you might have to get, you're probably giving up Joe Carroll, who's going to be a key piece on your team next year. Yeah. You're probably giving up Ryan Roth, who's probably going to be in the league for another two years, and who's Hard having a, guy. and is and is in the midst of a great stretch right now. He's playing he's playing some of his best hockey of the year over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, yes. You know, you're you're giving up those guys. You know, if Sean Durs is involved. You have to give up an OA defenseman, or you have to give up an OA period. Are you going to give up one of Hollowell, Sandbrook, or Hadashell? No, you're not. You know, Hadashel's got twenty. Um, he's got, I think he's got thirty now. Thirty, I think yeah, he's got thirty now. So, you know, that's that's the thing. And I mean, people think that, you know, people think that making trades in this league is is easy. It really is. <laughs> it's not. You're not on easy mode on NHL 19. Well, okay? that's that's the issue. And you know what? It's, you know, did they try to make some moves? I'm sure they did. Yeah. You know, um, but at the end of the day, things just didn't work out. And you know, when I talked to Kyle Raftis about this after the deadline passed, he said that's. You know, that's the way it is. They, you know, they, they make moves that they felt, you know, they were approaching the deadline as, I don't think they were set buyers or set sellers because the way Kyle Rafta said it to me was, you know, we, they were looking at it as if it was a trade that either made them A, better now or B, better in the future. You know, whether it was... They're looking you know, for both. Adding, yeah, so yeah. They, they were almost doing both, and if nothing happened, it is what it is. Yeah, and they're fine with it. Yeah. You still got good depth in the youth side of things. Yeah. You got a good competitive team who can still make a good run at this playoffs. Yeah. And just because they're not where London is, it doesn't mean they're out. Yeah. You got more, when you have Morgan Frost or Barrett Hayden at the helm there, the anything is, in, the league. in Valalta, you can win a lot of games and win the big games. They've been there. This team can still get it done. If you don't believe because they made some trades, then I think you should evaluate your hockey knowledge.
Sorry if that's too bleak, but it's true. The Hounds did. I grade their trade deadline for not doing nothing as an A. I'm going to say A. I would like them for maybe have gotten some for Frost, sure. But at the end of the day, make, sometimes doing nothing is the right thing to do. Hounds this weekend, quick reminder, Thursday, 7 o'clock in North Bay. Saturday, 7.30 in Barrie. Sunday, 3.05 in Sudbury. I said that twice. <laughs> Peterborough comes home to, to play, or comes home, comes to Sault Ste. Marie to play the Hounds at home. At the GFL Memorial Gardens at 7:07. Next, long trip on the yeah, yes, to the, the four, big trip. To the 401 to the 400. Oh, uh, a lot of exhausting trip. That is next week in the 26th is when they are back on home ice. And Sunday they play against Kitchener. So keep an eye on the Sioux Grounds website, Twitter feed, Facebook page, website, anything. Keep an eye on the Hounds this weekend on their road trip. And make sure you get tickets for their upcoming home games, the 26th and 27th. 707 for the 26th and 207 against Kitchener on that Sunday. And like I said, this weekend in North Bay, Barrie, and in Sudbury. So we talked about the trade deadline there, Brad, a little bit. Players that went certain places with uh, Suzuki going over to Guelph. Guelph. And then you have McLeod and Tippett that went over to Saginaw that we've already dis- discussed. Uh, Mackenzie Atwistle. Also got traded as well to Guelph. You have those Guelph guys playing. Guelph still, is loading I still, up. I still think they needed a goalie, but. Yeah, if you don't know who Mackenzie Entwistle is, he played in the World Junior Team for Canada, just for everyone to have a little shout out there too. Yeah. Our uh, people say disappointing Canada team, but really it wasn't. Finland won the gold medal, so obviously it wasn't yeah. a joke. Uh, yeah, UPK. UPK, like that. Trade deadline, I guess, the OHL a little bit. Was still exciting. Players got yeah. moved that was expected to get moved. There was a and there were a lot of. The thing is, there weren't many big deals on Thursday ahead of the deadline, but there were a lot of deals. Period. Yeah. Um. You know, it's it's one of those things that it was just it was it was an interesting deadline because a lot of the big deals happened in like the two weeks before the deal before I, the deadline. I like the Rizika trade at Sudbury. Yeah. That's a little that's a that's the trade that kind of sticks yeah, out under, to me that might under the radar. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Rizika's not the you know he's not the big name, but nope. you know he's a guy who's gonna have an impact in Sudbury and he's gonna be real solid. Um you know that's a good deal. They uh Guelph gave up a lot. Like you said you, you know, already touched on it. Son Jersey Roberts and Zuki for Barrett Kerr when it was Zach Pori, Mark Woolley a fourth and yeah. 19, third and 21, a second and 22, and a conditional third yeah. in 2022. So that's a Guelph lot of things. Tra- Guelph traded away in the, like, ahead of the deadline. Guelph traded away something like 19 draft picks. Yep. And Jack uh, uh, Seneca yeah. uh, also got traded from yeah. Niagara to go over to Oshawa. That's a good That's a good deal for both teams. Like, Matt is- Broussard going that, going that way, too, with yep. Seneca is good. and. Leighton Moore, the def- the uh, the guy going from Niagara over to Oshawa is going to be a good, solid fit in Oshawa too. Yep, it is. And you got Oshawa, who's third over in the East. Ottawa, Niagara round up the top two before that. Sudbury in fourth. The Hounds are in second, 27, 10, 4, and 1. Brad, we got two more topics we're going to jump into. We only got about 10 minutes left approximately. Well, I don't know if we'll be able to buy some time, but we got to get to these two bonus topics. We've talked about everything local. Wrapped up everything we could. If we missed anything, don't hesitate to comment below to ensure that we wouldn't miss it going forward. But the game sports, so I find that we're pretty perfect with this crew that I have here and just in general with the game sports show. So comment below with your reactions about the Hounds, OHL, trade deadline, or any of the local comments that we have talked about in the first part of the show. Our two bonus topics. This will be our teaser topic going into Thursday as these topics will be brought up on Thursday and will be talked about in the same amount of detail essentially because they are pretty big topics. One for sure that we're going to talk about on Thursday is the Gardner booing. The other topic that I'm not going to say yet is we're going to try to fit it on Thursday because it's more of a local question. But we might bring it up because it would be good to bring it up to Dane and Justin. But stuff talking about it right now. It's enough talking about jump into it. Jake Gardner getting booed. Now, you have the stat on your phone up right now. Everyone knows how I've been towards Jake Gardner. Joe Bowen knows. Paul Maurice even knows okay paul maurice didn't give me much comment obviously and it wasn't on air joe bowen kind of roasted me on air about it a little bit saying but dave jake garner's plus 20. dave jake garner's got most points as defenseman at that current time that was last year morgan riley obviously leading the way this year by far but jake garner since 2013 i saw him play in that playoff against the boston bruins in 2013 and it was the best hockey i've seen jake garner play Ever since then, I have seen inconsistency in his game. 
I've seen a lack of defensive ability. He's def- definitely an offensive defenseman. There's no freaking chance. If anyone says he's an offensive defenseman, I want you to sit on the show and give me one reason why you think that because he's not defensive. He is not. He has been struggling in positional play. So have other defensemen, though, in Toronto. Toronto does not have a decor that can stand up to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Okay? Toronto wants to win the Cup this year. Great. I want them to, too. Professionally speaking, being a sports guy, I can't have a favorite team in sports, I should say, on area on, on, on the show, unless we're talking about that team in a certain segment. So I'm kind of going outside segment saying that. But when you line up against Tampa, you have McDonough, Hedman, uh, and Sergeyev, and all these guys that are there. Then you got Riley. Dermot, Zaitsev, Hainsey. Obviously, there is a difference there. But you don't need a star-studded decor to win the title. Look at Pittsburgh winning it against Nashville. They were missing Latang. They had their sixth, seventh strings playing as their second pairing. Okay, so, Brad, I will say the Leafs have an offensive, talented team. They have a team that if they get past the second round against Tampa, because I think they are going to get past the first round against Boston this year. If they do get past Tampa, who I think is going to be in the second round, spoiler alert, Winner of that series is going to the cup final, in my total honest opinion to you. And I will say, though, because we're talking about Jake Gardner, this decor is not that good. It's not. It's not a good decor. It isn't. I said, and, I, and, let, and let's go back. I said last summer. We've been saying they need a decor for a year and a half. <laughs> but, this, but this is a team where everyone, you know, the big deal over the summer was. We need D was how good offensively they were, and they are good offensively as a group, as a team. But I brought up the point on the show of how this is a team that gives up a ton of shots. Lots. And that's their defense is and, Anderson. And, and, we're, and we're seeing that a lot right now. Um, then you add John Tavares, right? And then the $11 million guy, Nylander, you re-sign. Who has been absolutely brutal. I'm sorry. He hasn't been playing good. I'm sorry, William Nylander. If you find your ears over to the show somehow. He's been, okay, He's been guarded. He has been not good. And I, I'm sorry you haven't been. You're soft on the puck. Your defensive play has been horrible. Not that you are relied on defensively. But you need to back check. Trust me. I know it feels like not to back check. Okay? You're not supported much Okay, from any sort of fans. Your offensiveness has not been existent. Sorry. Uh, like Morgan Riley and Jake Gardner even have put up better numbers than you offensively. Okay, I think Ron Hainsey has put up better stats offensively since he came Ron, back Ron, from Ron, his sign. Ron Hainsey's got 15 points, by the way. Just yeah, just that out okay. So I want to. I wish we yeah. can go back. Maybe I'll get this for Thursday. But since Ron Hainsey and Elander played at the same time, Hainsey must have more points than Elander does. He must. He he, he must. And I will get this. St- we're not going to get it, get the stats. Okay. My point is. He's there to score goals, and he's William, not doing his job. Just throwing it out there, William N- Nylander's got three points in 17 games right now. Three. Wow. Three points. Hainsey, I know, already has two goals in the last 17 games, I think, So, uh, and some assists. So I know Hainsey's got more points than Nylander does. So Run Hainsey's got as many goals as William Nylander has points this year. Well, there you go. So I will say Nylander's been trash. Okay, but we're talking about Jake Gardner here. We're going to rewind four yeah. minutes here before I went on that little rant. Jake Gardner got booed, okay? Yeah. And I was sitting at home, and I felt bad. Okay, I did. I really did feel bad for him in the term of, you know what, the guy does play. He loves being in Toronto. Yeah. I love that about him. His teammates love him. Yeah, he does. They do. Okay, he did get emotional in a post-game interview, and I'm just getting where for producer goes. He did buy us five more minutes, so we can do that uh, as this topic gets extended. <laughs> booed Brad and I was sitting on the couch and I actually felt bad for the guy yeah. alright but he is not helping his fucking case at all I said on a comment we had some comments on TSM myself and Dane we're going back and forth with a couple of mutual friends of ours about how he, the D, Leafs decor needs improvement but how they can boo someone like that is classless yeah. you know what I'm sorry Leaf fans have high expectations Montreal fans every Canadian fan base does unless you're the Ottawa Senators no offense, Ottawa. I don't think you're as passionate as the other Canadian teams. Okay. Booed on the ice, was he, Brad? And did he deserve that booing? Not at all. Not no. Not at all. I mean, I'm, you know what? He's I'm been not, struggling, I mean, but. Yeah, and it, you know what? I mean, I, I get that, you know, I take issue with people saying, well, I paid for my ticket. I paid $300 for my ticket. I can do what I want. 
well, you know what? You paid three hundred dollars for your ticket, but it doesn't give you a right to be, you know, to be a, a jerk about it. Um, you know, opinions are one thing. If you don't like the way a way the play the way a player is playing, that's fine. Yeah. You know, you're entitled to an opinion on it. Yep. Um, you know, I, I look at it as I hope the fan was a lot. I hope the fans are booing the team a lot because the last six games they're. Even seven, I think they've lost four of the last six. Yeah. But and some and some people will throw out the well, you know, my money's going to pay that guy's salary. Okay, well, if you want to use that argument, and I know there are people that have used that argument, if you want to use that argument, then the next time you're having a tough day at your job, your boss is entitled to come in and give you a hard time and boo you at your desk. You know, it, it, like for me, it, it's pretty simple. I mean, I, you know, my boss would come to my desk and just basically, Brad, you suck. You're terrible. Go home. Get a, get off your, get away from your desk. Go home. What are you doing? The boo, you've that, been booing brutal. You got to try to is encourage that, him. Is that, any, is that any different from a fan booing a player on the ice? No, no. I don't feel like it is. Nope. Um, you know, throwing out some, throwing out some defensive numbers, and this was something we talked about before the show, and it took me forever to find these numbers when it really shouldn't have. But so looking at turnover differential, okay, so the difference between turnovers and takeaways. Yeah. Naturally, defensemen their their differential is going to be a little different because their takeaway numbers are generally going to be a lot lower than a forward. Okay. That's, you know, that's pretty, you know, that's pretty standard. You know, looking at the numbers, you know, so this basically includes Nikita Zaitsev, Ron Hainsey, Jake Gardner, Travis Dermott, the Russian kid. I'm not Igor or I got you. I can yeah, do that you one. On that I one. can do that one. Uh, and Morgan Riley. So that's basically including, what, seven defensemen. Okay, those are the guys with the seven worst differentials on the Maple Leaf roster. Okay, I'm not surprised that they're defensemen. Okay, considering that the Leafs right now have three defensemen averaging 20 plus minutes a night. That's Riley, Hainsey, Dermott, or Gardner? Actually, surprisingly, Nikita Zaitsev, Jake Gardner, and Morgan Riley. Holy Christ. Okay? Nikita Zaitsev's differential is minus 42. <laughs> <laughs> He's got 47 turnovers and five takeaways. That's it. So 42. That's our four and a half million dollar guy for seven more years, Leaf fans. Okay. Yeah. Averaging Ron Hainsey averaging just under 20 minutes a night. It's minus 30. Turn the puck oh, over 47 I times. Feel, I like Hainsey. That's okay. unfortunate. Jay Gardner's third, and he's a minus 21. Okay. Granted, Trav Dermott, minus 19. Or minus 17, rather. You know, you look at you look at John well, Tavares. You look at John Tavares. You know, who's essentially your top forward. You know, John Tavares is a minus ten. Like we we put so much into one guy. You know, we talk. You know, talking Jake Gardner. Here's the issue. Jake Gardner is the issue. Is Jake Gardner really the issue? No, it's because they need other guys. What if you put Jake Gardner? With a defenseman that actually like this, knows what the hell he's doing back there. This is a there. defense core that, and I wish I would have done. I wish I would have put these numbers together before we came on. But yeah, these are surprise like, topics. I yeah, have. like I mean, consider consider the fact that this is a team that their differential in their top defensemen are minus forty two, minus thirty, minus twenty one, minus seventeen, minus thirteen, and minus twelve. Morgan Riley is definitely last on that list. Yeah, Morgan yeah. Riley. Morgan Riley. Norris has, type year, sorry. Yeah, that's a Norris Mor- type Morgan year. Morgan Riley's got 52 giveaways, but 40 takeaways. Wild. 40. Like Wild. that's he's having a great a def- year for a great defenseman. Year. That's that's high high end. Yes, yes, yes. This is a group as defensemen. This is a group as a blue line that turns the puck over way too much. Like that, that's like we're ta- we're talking about a group. You know, we're not talking about one guy here. And, you know, just for example, I'll bring up the Tampa Bay Lightning just out of curiosity. 
And I yeah. guarantee Tampa doesn't have that much. You look at the Leafs. Tampa's top guy in terms of, well, I guess in this case it would be bottom guy. In terms of differential, Mikhail Sergachev, minus 19. 19. 19. More puck possession, more goals, less goals against. That's what that leads to. That's why they were successful when when Vasilevsky got hurt and Luis Domingue goes in yeah, and led the charge. They because, the puck no, and they get they don't allow thirty plus shots a game. You can't depend on Anderson. Anderson's a great goalie, but you can't depend on him to win you hockey games all the time. But we're gonna say about Gardner here. I've never been a huge Jake Gardner fan, and I say as a as a as a, a sports expert guy that I say professionally speaking. All right, but. So fans, what I want to say is Buena may not be the right way to go for a guy who's actually been pretty loyal to the city. And, yes, he struggles. I've said it on the show that I believe him moving on will be the best thing to ever happen to him and this Toronto team. But I guarantee you if we move him, like Justin said, he says a good point, is that we would miss him because of his offensive output. If Morgan Riley wasn't having the season that he was, we would be depending on Jake Gardner's offensive output. So you need this year to suck it up with Jake Gardner unless you can trade him. I would rather not trade Greg, trade Jake Gardner this year. I'm sorry. Let him go at the end of the year, sure. I'm trying to move Nikita Zaitsev, not because of that differential, because of that bullshit contract he has for seven more years for $4.2 million. I'll eat up a million of that for the next seven years if I have to, if I'm Kyle Dubas. You move Zaitsev before you move Gardner. And fans booing him. Yeah, I'm upset. And if you pay 500 bucks a ticket, you are entitled to what you want to say. Sure, if you want to make that argument, go ahead. But think of it from the other end. Booing him is not what's going to help. I'm going to depend on Babcock and even Dubas here to make the right moves and put him in the best situation. If that's trading him or adding. We need defense if you want to win the cup. You need defense. Toronto doesn't have that. Go after Petrangelo. Go after somebody who is defensive. There's people available. And those stats, Brad, I appreciate you pointing up those stats. Producer Dugos didn't have to do any, goals, didn't have to do any work there. I like that. But Jake Gardner getting booed, fans got to relax a little bit, okay? This team has struggled a little bit, sure. Now we got Tampa coming up next. It's going to be a bit of a – that's going to be a tough game. But the Leafs will bounce back and be fine this year. If they don't make odds, though, it might not be a long playoff run that we want. They do need defense. Comment below on what you think about Jake Gardner. Brad and I don't agree with the booing, but we definitely agree that he's been playing like absolute inconsistent. Lee Lander is the one that's been playing like absolute garbage. Let's look into that. Or look into Zaitsev a bit more, people. That guy has been playing worse than Gardner has. Brad, almost going into additional overtime here. I'm going to make this quick two-minute uh, rapid fire here. And uh, Dane, Justin, and I will be talking more about Gardner in our Thursday show. So we've already talked about it here for the past 15 minutes. So we'll talk about it more on Thursday. So it'll be a lot more Gardner and Leafs talk when we talk at North Superior Brewing Company this upcoming Thursday. The last topic I want to get to is adding another rink in Sault Ste. Marie. Okay, I got a little smile for you there, okay? Now, here's my proposal. Mayor Dave McKeggs, Christian Provenzano, I'm just kidding. I'm just making a, a, a hypothetical here. You keep the gardens, obviously. You have the John Rose Community Center. You have the Rankin. Big fan of the Rankin, to be honest. I actually think that's where Sioux College should be playing out of, to be totally honest with you. I'm a fan uh, of, the Rankin, of the Rankin Arena. The McMeekin, I don't even really want to talk about the McMeekin Center, to be totally honest, but McMeekin, my proposal is you knock down the McMeekin and you build a twin ice pad, or at least one big pad, at the Northern Credit Union Complex, where the, double, where the, where the fields are. You make that a big field, you knock down the McMeekin, expand parking, to add a lot more parking spots, you increase the land to go backwards more. There's more land there towards the tennis courts. You may have to knock those down. we got a lot of places for tennis courts that we can add in town and renovate those because those tennis courts are older behind Cora Collegiate there. You add that rink there. That new rink is where the Sioux Thunder Bridge will play out of. Try to put circular seating like Kirkland has, I think, or try to at least make seating like the Rankin Arena where it's higher seating. The John Rhodes Community Center will be where the minor midgets play and the major midgets play. Potentially Sioux College if they don't play at the Rankin. GFL Memorial Gardens, we know who plays there. Okay, so we I got hear, the... I hear there's some junior yeah, team. Yeah, some junior there. team there that plays at the gardens. This city needs to get rid of the McMeekin Arena, in my opinion. And I think add another ice pad or two to the Northern Credit Union Complex there in the West End. That's Now, I'm, I want your your quick comment on that. I'm going to be pretty boring, but I'm, I'm on board with that. 
with the issues that the McMeekin Center has had over the last three or four years, um, something needs to be done. I mean, I know money is at a premium, so to speak, in this city, but you yeah. know what? You it also spend, creates jobs. You got to spend money to make money. Exactly. Create jobs, make it better, make it more attractive We've to watch the Thunderbirds. We made enough mistakes with arenas in this city. Yeah. They need to get something done. And you know what? At this point, I would even take a single pound for McMeekin. Knock it down. The new Mc, Are you going to keep it the McMeekin? Do you call I would, it? You I would, would, okay. I, would keep okay. the, I would keep the name on there. I mean, okay. I'm, I'm a little sentimental with that. I, would keep I like the, that. I would keep Just the like the gardens. On. Yeah. Just I would like the keep gardens. the name on it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I would be okay with that. I mean, that's, yeah, something needs to be done. Another, we Circular need another, seating in the one pad, I like, so. or stands, yeah. or do you, like, almost like the polar, or do you do something like the ranking? Because the roads here, let's be real. I would have a, I would, I would be fine with either or. Just make sure that if you're putting the Thunderbirds there, just make sure that you don't do what you did here at the roads. Yeah, I don't think the seating is great for the roads. Like it's a great atmosphere. I, 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 I got great, trained on this rink since I was ten years old. It's so. great for minor hockey. I don't think it's great for junior. If you're not a town team coming here, I used to play on some teams. Like we've said numerous times, and I brought this up almost on every show. I bring up experiences, but I've came in. And they go, wow, this arena has no fit for a junior hockey team. It's true. And they're right. They've been saying it. Yeah. It's still a thing. They need to have another arena added, and they need to have the circular seat. Yeah. So you agree. I'm in. Listeners need to agree. Dane and Justin and I will touch on this a bit more because we'll have a bit more time on Thursday what we think. And also, as long as we get through our other topics that we have to discuss on Thursday. So we have lots of teasers here for our Thursday show. And we discussed a lot here, did Brad and I. We've been live here at Icebreaker Sports Bar and Grill. Still packed for the tournament here in Sault Ste. Marie. I don't, uh, hopefully my truck hasn't been towed away in your car. It's still in good condition out there, Brad. I want to say thank you to you, the listeners. Scott Neeson, who was our board operator. For the second time in a row, Scott, I blew it. I didn't say it off the hop. I apologize. I've heard it throughout the show. That's why I saved the best piece of news for last. There you go. Save that. i just kidding. Because the next piece of the best that I'm bringing in, alongside Scott... Brad, I want to say thank you to you for coming on by here at Icebreaker Sports Bar and Grill. I know you're gone this weekend, and the following weekend I think you're gone as well. I'll be Greyhound game, Greyhound so game. it'll so be depending on when we decide to to the show. Record. So we'll, we'll try to get you on uh, hopefully the following week. And even when you're away this upcoming week, and get some text comments or something when we do the show on Sunday. Hopefully Justin or Brad come to replace you on Sunday. Or uh, Brad, Brad, or Brad, Brad can't replace. Brad. Yeah, blew it again. Justin or Dane will hopefully be here in your place next week. Quick reminder: Sports Center tomorrow nine o'clock. Northern six o'clock. Or sorry, Northern at seven fifteen this Thursday, and this upcoming Sunday we'll be back at Icebreakers. We we'll return to the Wicked Sister this upcoming Monday the twenty first. Brad, I want to say thanks again for coming on by tonight, and nice. we'll see you when we see you next, my friend. It's always a pleasure. The Twin Sues only local, regional, and national sports show here. Dave McKagle on sign Brad. Thanks to Brad again and to Scott Nason and to you, the listeners, for making us a part of your night tonight. And until tomorrow from Sports Center Bar and Grill, keep your stick on the ice, swing your bat, catch your touchdown, drain your threes, and shoot your shots. Booyah.